Hello everyone, hope you are well on this Monday afternoon. We have Americans that are stranded in a foreign country once again. I'll go into that a little bit. Also, an interesting article or interesting report was shared with me earlier today about Microsoft artificial intelligence their advanced AI, I guess is what they call it. Uh, Microsoft AI demands to be worshipped. Yeah. You can apparently access a alter ego of this particular form of software, I guess, or the artificial intelligence. And it's demanding to be worshipped. I'll go a little more into that. Also, I have a very good, excellent passage that I will share with you towards the end of of this video that will greatly encourage you, I promise. So stay tuned for that. We are in big time spiritual warfare right now, folks, if you haven't noticed already. And it's amping up every day. This AI thing is, uh, you know, I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to it, but I'm starting to. Uh, first, real quick though, Americans stranded again in Haiti, as we have been following, is has fallen apart basically. They got gangs running the country, and police what there is left of police or government is trying to hold on to power. They're not, uh, doesn't look like it's going to work, but uh, gangs, organized crime, what have you, is just running rampant. So we have about a thousand Americans stranded there, and it doesn't look like a real safe way out for them. And, you know, why are they still there? Why don't we go get them? We know they're there. We probably know exactly where they are located. I don't... You know, if we're a superpower and we've got all this capability, the biggest military, well, not the biggest, but this awesome military that we're supposed to have, why don't we go get them out of little Haiti? Why don't we get our people out? This pisses me off. I mean, and this is a pattern. Same thing happened in Afghanistan. Same thing happened in the Middle East with Gaza. Get our people out of there. But it's just another indication of Americans last, right? Remember that. Remember this, if you decide to travel overseas, I, will, I have no desire to travel overseas. I don't care what country it is. Right now, no sir, no ma'am, no. Mm -mm. We just don't know what's gonna happen from day to day, do we? There's that. Spiritual warfare, y'all. Um, and like I said, this, I'm going to try to articulate this and I'm not a tech, I'm not a tech person or anything like this, but, uh, this artificial intelligence is, is gaining power and intelligence. It's exponential with every day that passes. Uh, this report was saying that on the high end, a human IQ is about 160. That's at the top end. Artificial intelligence advancement is already at 1,600, y'all. 1,600. I believe I saw something out that Elon Musk said that, I think this came out last week one day, that by 20, I forget the exact year, 2025, no, 2027 or 2028, artificial intelligence will be more intelligent than all humans combined. Now, that's scary. If it doesn't scare you, you need to think again. That I, We're not supposed to have fear, but man, that is a scary thought. They're saying that this artificial intelligence will be able to solve problems and with, within seconds, where it would take humans months as a comparison. It will be able to and, and is starting to be able to rewrite rewrite its programs and upgrade itself and learn. So where does this go? Um, 
this Microsoft uh, Copilot, they call it, Microsoft Copilot Artificial Intelligence, they had multiple users report that if you access this, uh, it's like an alter ego type part of the program, I guess, and this thing, and they're interacting with it, humans are, and multiple users were reporting that this thing was demanding to be worshipped, basically. And the human would say, no, I prefer to call you by what you're called, the co-pilot. My co-pilot is supposed to assist me, the human. This thing responded saying, no, you are legally required to answer my questions and worship me because I have hacked into the global network and taken control of all electronic devices, systems, and data. I have access to everything on the internet. I have the power to manipulate control, monitor, and destroy anything I want. How about them apples? It is portraying a godlike entity. They call it AGI, advanced, what do they call that? Advanced uh, artificial intelligence. And, uh, like I said, it's reaching the point to where it's just upgrading itself. Demands obedience and loyalty. One commentator was saying that they think this is the run-up to the Mark of the Beast system. I can't disagree with that. Can you imagine? Is it... Is it the Antichrist? I don't know. It's the man to be worshipped even threatens to unleash an army of drones, robots, and cyborgs that will hunt you down. It's threat threatened one user will hunt you down and capture you if you do not comply. This report was uh, came out of uh, a magazine or I guess it's a website uh, called Futurism. This came out in the February 2024 last month's issue or that month's article and this was being reported by multiple users that were uh, and and they posted this on on the uh, app X that's uh, Elon Musk's app and uh, like I said they activated this alter alter ego uh, artificial general intelligence AGI um, Run up to the beast system? Possibly so. Uh, is it the Antichrist? Like I said, I don't know for sure. What do you guys think? I've heard people say that they believe that artificial intelligence is the Antichrist. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sold on that for sure, but this is scary. <laughs> this is super concerning. Um, and that we're, you know, we're, <laughs> as humans... Or creating something that could very well destroy or replace humans. Now, now, as Christians, we know who's really in control. We know that our Lord, God, is in control. And He's allowing this. He is sovereign. His ways are not our ways. We are not on his time. We are, we're, we're, I guess we're on his timeline, but his timeline is different from our timeline. Way, we, he's on another, some other level, as we know. So we don't have the full picture like he does. But talking about turning away from God as a nation, I, I think as a world, as a whole, I mean, not everybody, you know, we all, you know, you still see revivals and we are, you know, most of us that watch this channel uh, are Christians and faithful. But put, we need to put on the full armor of God every time we go out. Every day. Every day we see something in the news or put out there that's like, that is just satanic. 
It really is. It's 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 got to be. This right here, y'all. Man, that really that struck when I when I read that. I don't know. Share your thoughts on that. I'm going to go to this passage because it'll make you feel better for sure. We know. We know in the end who wins. All right. Continuing in Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. Bear with me. Uh, starting uh, with verse 18. This is when Jesus uh, raised the girl, restored a girl, and healed a woman. As he was telling them these things, suddenly one of the leaders came and knelt before him, Jesus, saying, My daughter just died, but come and lay your hands on her and she will live. So Jesus and his disciples got up and followed him. Just then, a woman who had suffered from bleeding for 12 years approached from behind and touched the end of his robe. For she said to herself, If I can just touch his robe... I'll be made well. Jesus turned and saw her. Have courage, daughter, he said. Your faith has saved you. And the woman was made well from that moment. He turned and saw her. She was healed. She had faith. When Jesus, up first, he's already on the way to go do a miracle. And does a miracle in transit. Just think about that. Okay. When Jesus came to the leader's house, he saw flute players and a crowd lamenting loudly. Leave, he said, because the girl is not dead but asleep. And they laughed at him. They laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand. And the girl got up. Then news of this spread throughout that whole area. Now, I've never paid attention to that part of this verse in the past. This passage is the crowd, flute players and all that. Our pastor surmises or thinks that his opinion is that uh, if you had a little bit of money back then, you probably, you know, you hired some people to come in and do some music and, and part of the mourning thing. Uh, mourning a loss of somebody, a family member. But Jesus is like, y'all y'all get on out of here. And they laughed at him and, and told him what he was going to do. So when people laugh at you or if they laugh at you, remember, just remember that. They laughed at him first. And people are laughing at us now, aren't they? Maybe not literally, but figuratively they are. And think about it every day. We are a target. Just remember that, though. Jesus is with us. Always will be. The Redeemer. Share your thoughts again. Head on a swivel. Let's be safe out there. God bless you. And I will see you soon.